Okay, so here we are ready to start a game of China. I've dealt out everybody their three cards. I gotta try to remember to use these fortifications. One reason I kind of thought about not playing with them was with this new black table. It's kind of hard to see them. Uh, maybe if I throw them on top. I don't know. It may be hard for me to remember them. It would be anyway difficult to remember. And I've also dealt out the initial set of cards. So let's take a look at green. Now, here's the thing. Whatever you get early in the game probably is going to help decide where you go. So now, he's sitting on cards that are all one play cards. He doesn't have any pairs, so he can't double play in an area. That's okay, he can only play one piece at the beginning of the game in an area anyway. That's one of the restrictions. Um, right? How does that work exactly? Maybe I explained that wrong, yeah? It sounds a little funny. It's the first person in the area, right? Yeah. It's the first player to go into an area who can only play one card. So when you're carving out new territory, uh, it, you're making it easier for everyone else to go in there. So the question becomes, well, what do I want to do? Do I want to play this thing that I can't draw an additional card of? Or do I want to play something that then I can get two cards in? I think I want to play this one that I cannot fill. And I want to play um, a house because I cannot play an emissary right off the bat. There are no houses in any of the areas. So now the question is, well, what am I going to go for? Am I going to go for green or purple? I just played a red card. If I wanted to go for purple, I would go over here. If I'm going to go for green, I'm going to go over here. Uh, I'm going to go for a green. And I'm going to play in here. And then as my selection, I get this and a new card comes up for the next player. And that puts it into Yellow's hands. Now Yellow has kind of a nice situation. He has two of one color. Uh, he can either use that as a wild card, or he could play two pieces in one area. However, he can't play two places in either of the green areas because nobody else is there. He'd like to kind of hold on to that, so he's going to play one of these suckers. He's going to try to position himself for green, there's a lot of purple pieces out there. What does that mean? Does that mean that it's easier for him to play off purple? Well, not if he doesn't draw purple, but he might. So he's going to play this piece. He's going to grab himself a purple card, and that's his play for the turn. And that puts it over to the purple player, who also has a pair. He doesn't want to break that pair up. It's an orange. He'd like to play away from, well, no reason to break that pair up. He can pair it. He can play it immediately. So he's going to throw down a pair of houses. Did he want to put an emissary? I don't know. You see, emissaries don't score early. No biggie about that. Score is just something that matters at the end of the game. Uh, but there's very little guarantee about how much uh, they're going to be worth. Whereas these houses, he's already grabbed a first place position in this uh, territory by playing those two. He can play them because somebody else already played there. And now he grabs himself a green. Now, he would have liked to connect to that green, perhaps. And he's going to grab a purple because he does connect to purple there. And that gives him, the next player, a couple more options to show up. We go over to the blue player, and wow, he's got all red pieces. Now, not a lot he can do with that. He can only play into the red. If he wants to play two pieces, well, it's got to be into this area. What's he going to draw with those two? Maybe into the greens. So now the question here is, well, where? Uh, does he go along this line or this line? Hard to tell. Uh, I'm going to keep from dropping pieces. Uh, I don't know. Uh, this looks more promising for whatever reason. He throws these two. 
grabs himself a pair of greens. And of course, this is all open information, what the other players have. When you're playing in two players, it's fairly easy to keep track of. But playing in more than two, well, it becomes a little more difficult. And when you're playing it all solo, it all blurs together and you can't remember who knows what. Okay, here we go. Somebody who wants to break into a new area because he does not have a pair. So he's got no real option there. Now his question is, what does he want to break into? With those yellows out there, uh, the red is appealing, but he's got these oranges which he could match, or the purples which he could match. What he's going to do, he's going to play the red. He'll drop himself down there, and he'll grab a purple. Giving himself the position to pair up there. Oh, I don't know if playing out everything makes a lot of sense. I'm going to kind of uh, step back and play at a somewhat higher level now and talk about maybe what happens each round as I go through it. Well, that's tough for me to do in this case. I pulled up these cards. Uh, the green player has two green cards. He was hoping to be able to expand into here, but nobody else went there, so he loses that opportunity. Now, he could play one green card, but he doesn't want to do that. Instead, what he's going to do is he's going to play just a purple card. He's going to drop that into there uh, because he could only play one card in the green. And now the question is, what does he want to expand into? Well, yellow looks more promising than anything else. He could have drawn again to try to get something else, but nothing's really appealing. Yellow is as good as anything else for him. Uh, let's see what his thoughts are. Yellow here. Yellow has two greens and a purple. Ooh, that's kind of tough. He may want to break into that green area. Alternatively, he could play the two greens to go wherever he likes. What he's trying to do here is build a four root, though, and he's not going to get that. He's been cut off here, here, and here. The most he can do is get a three root. Hmm. That may mean that playing that green is of less value than it would otherwise be. So he's going to play a green here and take another green and try to strengthen his position up here in the Yan province. Again, the play of other people is forcing people into this kind of situation. What about purple? Purple's got a couple of greens. He's also got a purple. He's going to throw that purple down, push himself in here. He gets a four set uh -oh. if he has a yellow. So he wants to expand into a yellow. He could have played these two greens to play another purple piece. Hmm, that would be appealing. Hold on, let's do that. I played one purple to play here. I've got two more purples. Where, what am I going to do with them? Well, or two more greens, that gives me a purple. I'm going to head this way because that'll make me the longest road that I can get. And now I get three draws. Uh, what do I want? <laughs> I like yellow. But I don't know if I want to take that yet. I'm going to draw a card. I got a yellow. I'm going to draw another card. I got a red, which isn't terribly useful. I'll pick up this yellow. And now I've had kind of the most interesting turn so far with playing all my cards. All right, let's go to blue. Blue. Blue has a couple of greens. Now he could play those up here. He has a red, which isn't terribly valuable. But. He could play more reds into play. Hmm. He's going to crack into that green territory, and he's going to take another green card to put himself in a somewhat better position. Oh. It's hard to tell. Does he want the green card or does he want the orange card? I think actually he'll take the orange card, because that gives him the four root either way. Okay, and that puts us over to Red, who has a couple of purples and an orange. Not terribly good cards for him. What could he do with the two purples? Well, he could bust into orange a little bit more powerfully. So he could put a, a piece in here. That would get him two uh, points right off the bat and an emissary. I kind of like that. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play this orange and drop the house here. And I believe this immediately scores. So we get a disc to indicate that we're scoring it. Purple gets four points. Yellow and red each get two points. That's how many purple had. And hey, they're scoring. And now I'm going to spend the other two cards to grab myself the only other thing I can play here, which is an emissary. There's only one more emissary allowed here. Whoever plays there, if it's red, he maintains his majority. If it's not red, he's stripping the majority from red, but he's not going to be able to get any points off of it. So it's only really a way of hurting red. Unlikely to happen unless red's in the lead. So now I get to draw some cards with red. Well, there's a green area that I can play into, so that looks valuable. And what about my other card? Red looks valuable too as a way of expanding there, maybe as a long-term thing. I'm planning on using those greens so it doesn't seem like a bad card. All right, I'll do one more round in detail and then I'll end this video and on the next video we'll take it at that higher level that I want it to go to. Uh, green. Green's got a couple of pieces. Now he's got an interesting position. He wants to extend his line, and what he wants to do, this has the most opportunity, I think, for advance, for becoming a longer line. Not that it's a particularly big advantage to have a line that's more than four, but almost nobody's interested in playing here. It could happen like how Red played there, but I've got a pretty good chance of connecting this up. Likewise, it would be in this situation. Nobody would be terribly interested in playing there. What do I need to get? Well, I want more yellow, although I don't know how much value two yellows really is to me. If someone opens this up, I would like that opportunity there, and I want another purple to expand down here if need be. And at worst, I have a pair there so I could play two pieces down here. That would be nice enough too. Okay, we go to the yellow player, see what he's got left. Ooh. He's got greens, which he can't terribly use, but he could get first place down here by playing those two. That's an interesting play. Not terribly valuable, but there's nothing else that looks tremendous to him. So that's what he's going to do. He's going to play two houses here. Now nobody's playing their fortifications yet. Uh, Red could have scored more points maybe with theirs. That makes this a scoring section. So we'll go here. Green and yellow each get five points. Blue gets two points because that's the amount the next high, the next player with more has. And I get to draw some cards. Now I'm not building chains here. That doesn't seem like a good idea, so I'm going to grab myself a couple of orange pieces, a couple of orange cards. It's good to have pairs. They give you flexibility. You can turn them in. Even if you don't manage to double play somewhere, you can turn them in as a wild color uh, to match one of your other colors. So they, they can be helpful that way. The purple player. Hey, he's in kind of a nice place here. He's got this, which isn't going to be part of his set. He could expand into a yellow, but that would only be getting him a point there. Uh, alternatively, he could start building another road here. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to play all three of his cards as red and drop a piece here and a piece there. And what does he want back? Well, he likes purple. He could extend his, his line very nicely with purple. And he also likes red to fill this in. No guarantees that's what he's going to do with it. Purple cards become kind of interesting as the game goes down. Once that purple set is kind of gone or filled up, it can fill up earlier than all the others. They then just kind of become wild cards, right? Okay, we're on blue, and he's got a set of all kinds of different colors, which is not terribly good for him. 
He could, of course, discard a card, but why not play one? Uh, might be time to break into this orange area. And I think that's what he's going to do. That gets him his four house line. He's going to score those suckers. He can't play anywhere other than here. So now the question is, what does he want? Red or green? Well, he doesn't have either of them. He's just going to draw a random, and he lucks out and matches with what he's got. Just what he really wanted to do. What do we have here? Reds and greens for red. All right, so red could build a bunch of red pieces. No question there. Or he could push his way over into the green territory. It seems more valuable to me to play out these pieces over here. Now he's interested in yellow to get his four space. And he's interested in playing in some of these areas that are adjacent to the area he's got an emissary in to get more emissaries. That's a hard call. Uh, I'm going to draw a card. I get a yellow. I'm not going to be able to play two yellows necessarily, so I'm going to draw another random card. Just see what comes up. I get a red. That would give me my four line over in the red side. I could actually fill this up. That's an expensive thing to do, to take an area all to yourself. But if you do it, you deny everyone else all the points for it. So that seems kind of promising. I'm going to grab another yellow card with that in mind. And that is the end of this video. We're going to uh, split this up, this game, into multiple videos, although we're fairly deep into the game already. Uh, probably finish up the, the game on the next video because, I, like I said, I'm going to kind of step away from it and not uh, pay, focus in on every single play. All right, up it goes.